Powerful Nerdcast assembles! Stay dandy, baby. The big battle between the League of Villains and the Meta Liberation Army comes to an explosive end as we also dive into the final parts of Tomura Shigaraki's backstory and how he was groomed by all for one. But this episode also poses a pretty important question. Does Himiko Toga look better with or without an eye patch? I'm leaning towards Big Boss Pirate style Himiko Toga, but that's just me. Hello my friends and welcome to another review of My Hero Academia. Today we're taking a look at one of the final episodes in the fifth season. It looks like it's going to all end with the next episode and I don't know where it's going to go from here and honestly that gets me kind of excited. Although I'm probably going to learn a little bit more as I start to dive a little bit more into the manga version after watching this. A lot of my commenters have really wanted me to look at the manga version of My Hero Academia especially because they've made some pretty big changes in this season. Many of which I haven't been able to notice although I am starting to feel the effects of them just a little bit. But before we go further into the review, if you guys are liking my content, my videos, my reviews, maybe think about subscribing to the channel. You'd be helping the channel grow and it would certainly make me a happy boy. Make sure to obliterate that like button. Just smash it with all of your might. It helps out these videos tremendously. And maybe consider checking out my Patreon page where if you guys make a monthly donation, you'll be helping to support the channel. And remember, first time donators, I'll review an anime series of your choosing. But let's go ahead and jump into this episode right here, which pretty much was a big solid conclusion to the battle between Tomura Shigaraki and Reed Destro. And while all of that stuff is really crazy and over the top and awesome, I mean, for fuck's sake, Reed Destro quite literally summons a massive mech suit to cover his giant hulked out stressed body. Most of this episode is all about the backstory of Tomura Shigaraki and getting to see where he get to where he is today. And I thought it worked. I thought it was basically more of an extension of some of the stuff that we saw in last week's episode. But it was decidedly dark in that way that always manages to surprise me. My Hero Academia is a show that is not afraid to go into dark territory, but because of its outward appearance being so colorful and comic booky, whenever it goes into this type of material, it's always very shocking. And we get to learn that, again, Tomo Shigaraki is kind of an interesting villain. He was essentially a villain who was perfectly designed by All for One. And I'm not sure if he had any sort of part in him going completely crazy and killing his family or anything, or if that was something that was just innately in, uh, you know, Tenko's mind when he decided to go insane. But he certainly was there to sort of pick up the pieces and build him in his very own image, which is definitely the most best thing about this episode, in my opinion. So what's really creepy about the beginning scenes is we get to go, like, go back into the backstory after he killed his family with him just sort of aimlessly walking around, being continually freaked out and side of his head, constantly scratching himself, covered in blood, and basically looking like a pretty creepy individual. And instead of people actually trying to help this young child in order to, you know, give him some legitimate help, they just sort of walk by him or they get scared by his overall appearance. And again, this is just another one of those things where society is helping in formating and turning Tomura Shigaraki into the villain that he actually is in the series. And it's overall disturbing. There's a scene where, like, this one dude sees him and just runs away. This old lady looks like she's going to help him. The minute she sees his face, she gets scared and runs away, thinking, oh, the cops or the heroes are going to be the one to save the day. And, of course, those cops or heroes never show up, and he eventually gets found by none other than All for One, who decides to groom him as his very own personal pet, even stamping him with his own, you know, brand of approval being that his last name is Shigaraki. That's a pretty important part, by the way, getting to learn that that is actually his name and everything. We also get to learn the meaning behind his name, Tomura. I think he said it was Tomarao, which is like a play on the Japanese word of mourn. So again, you know, his entire backstory is something that he constantly wears on his sleeves and quite literally because, of course, you know, the whole hands all over his freaking body and everything. But we get to see this is essentially where he was transformed into the character he was and basically putting him on the path to becoming like the next ultimate villain of the series, of being able to hold on to that love of love and hate itself all in one. We even get to see this really fucked up scene where when he was uh, on his own, he was picked on by these two guys on the street who are like the most stereotypical 
like Japanese bullies on the street. Like they're so over the top and insane that you know they're just gonna get killed, and they do. Eventually, Tomura does find him when he takes on the persona of his villain for the very first time, wearing the suit with all the hands on his body, and he decides to basically outright kill them. Essentially, again, this is just firmly establishing that this is all a part of All for One's plan into transforming him into the next symbol of fear, the perfect antithesis to that of All Might being, of course, the symbol of hope. But then we finally go back to the big battle at hand, with Gigantomachia, who's running through the streets, destroying everything in his wake. Everybody's freaked out by this dude. I don't blame them. He is absolutely terrifying. But then we get the final moments of the battle between Tomer, Shigaraki, and Redestro. And... You know, if it wasn't obvious before Redestro was going to lose because we saw the scene of Termer actually standing victorious in the city like 10 or 15 episodes ago when they hinted at this entire event, I do have to say I did not expect that Redestro was going to summon some sort of weird, ridiculous mecha suit to help him out, which was simply only going to increase his stress all the bit more. It's very weird looking, but I love the overall style of it, like covering his entire body and then starting to have like these giant pistons which shoot into his body, which causes him to become even more stressed thus unleashing more power. The problem is, it doesn't matter what sort of suit this guy's gonna wear, what kind of weapon he's gonna use, Tomer Shigaraki just needs to touch things and they're going to disintegrate. And this is where essentially Tomer unleashes his brand new awakened powers, where pretty much he just destroys everything, like in Deka City. Everything just gets completely glassed off the earth. It is insane and it's quite a spectacle and one of the coolest looking scenes of the entire season. Especially the scene where Reed Desro is desperately trying to like run away and little by little his like giant mech suit, which I believe was called the Claustro, starts to like disintegrate and fall off and he's hanging on just like the final part of it and he eventually just gets thrown off of it and lands and desperately damages his body to the point where he has to basically cut his own feet off. I have a feeling that this is something that happens in the manga. It's probably a little more explicit in terms of how it's shown. Because here I couldn't even tell at first when it was going down. And this is where we get like the nice big twist of the episode. Where I thought that Tomura was just going to finish him off. And that would be the end of the Meta Liberation Army. But actually Reed Destro ends up rethinking things. And makes the ultimate plan of allowing himself to possibly be killed. And allowing his entire army to join the League of Villains. However, this is where we get to see that Tomura is actually learning from his past mistakes, especially with the Shi'ai Hasaikai. We get to see that if they did somehow assimilate them into this organization, they would have a lot of backings to do the things that they want to do. And this is where he takes advantage of Reed Destro and his entire Meta Liberation Army, and they quite literally just assimilate them into the League of Villains and basically reform it. Before, the League of Villains was just a ragtag group of freaks who wanted to make a splash in the world and destroy everything. Now, they actually have a means of fully pulling it off with having such a massive force behind them. Even Gigantomachia is brought to tears when he sees the true awakening of Tomura Shigaraki here. It's, it's a really powerful moment. And getting to see all of them come together and survive and getting to see, like, Timiko Toga survived and she has, like, a weird eye patch. Twice is still struggling, which I think is kind of annoying, to be perfectly honest, because he just got over all of that shit. And I love the whole thing. It's like, man, if we'd have just worked with the Shi'ai Hasaikai, we'd have been having sushi by now. They hard cut to them getting fed sushi by the Meta Liberation Army, which is really great. You can still feel that there's a lot of tension between some of these characters, but the fact of the matter is they've joined... Tomer Shigaraki has taken his place as the lead of this organization, which now has a brand new name, which I don't understand the meaning of it, but it does sound really cool. Basically, they combine the two groups together and they're now known as the Paranormal Liberation Front. I'm not sure why paranormal is the action. I'm not sure where all the, the ghosty shit comes into play here, but it certainly is an intimidating and really cool name. I even like, you know, the fact that Tomura has kind of like a new look, like a little more all for one-ish in a sense. I mean, he's still got the hands on his body and everything, but he's got like a really cool new suit. He's wearing like this cape around him and he's just taking his place as like the true leader here and he really seems to be grooving on all of it. And of course, now that he has proved himself uh, to the doctor that works directly under all for one, he is now going to be given the power to get like some sort of like massive power up or something something that again was teased a couple of episodes ago where we saw the doctor actually experimenting on his body fact of the matter is a new villainous group has risen and shit about to hit the fan a massive fan fecal matter everywhere so what's the rundown on this episode of my hero academia this one was okay I'm not going to lie, I really did enjoy this arc, but I, I understand where like a lot of my commenters who read the manga are coming from. It felt a little disjointed at times. There were a lot of instances where I felt like 
there's more information that's just not been given to the viewer, especially in regards to the Meta Liberation Army and Reed Destro and everything. I mean, we know Reed Destro's like whole backstory is quite simple. Essentially, he's just trying to pick up where his illegitimate father was with his whole plan of trying to allow people to use their quirks freely without suppression but after being defeated and losing his legs and seeing the pure raw destruction that Tomura could cause he decided to go along with his plan knowing there still could be a freedom and the potential for him to do what he wants but of course Tomura still has his own plans which basically just involve destroying everything ripping it out from the roots essentially but he's more than willing to go along with the plan and he still has certainly somewhat of a personality he even has some sort of weird brand new mechanical chair that can move around and he's still quite the showman which i think is actually kind of awesome and perfect for his character and with his money and his resources he's going to allow the league of villains to be even more dangerous than they were before and to potentially act a little bit more from the shadows as his organization is going to be the perfect front they even managed to cover up the entire event of daka city so no one really even knew what happened again all of this was teased episodes ago but it certainly works a little bit better here now knowing everything that's truly going on here could they have shown this arc before all that and gone in the proper order yes would it have worked better almost certainly uh, but I can't really say until I actually end up looking at the manga version. But for what we're actually getting right here, this is a pretty nice arc for Tomer Shigaraki, a character who's been around since the very beginning of the series, but has never really had too much proper development. He's always just sort of been the bad guy, the creepy bad guy, with some small hints at his backstory. But finally diving into them in the last two episodes has certainly made me appreciate him a lot more, not just as a villain, but as a pretty well-developed and nuanced villain character. And I think that alone works. Production value wise there are certainly some cool moments in this episode i mean redestro transforming into a giant mecha version and everything was really awesome the scene where tomura destroys the entire city and we get these like really great camera movements of seeing like all of the destruction around the city followed by like a massive explosion is really great and of course a lot of the expressions on tomura's face look really freaking creepy and awesome there's just this spine tingling moment every single time he has like a big smile on his face with blood dripping down it he's still a very striking villain and in that sense it truly did work in this episode but it's still not perfect in my opinion if there's one way to discuss this entire arc it's that it's rushed and it feels like some things are just missing I'm going to have to see what that is when I eventually get to the manga version, but for now I'm going to finish the season, give my final thoughts on that, and then I'd like to do a comparison of the two, hopefully pretty soon after that, probably like a few days after that episode airs. But for this one right here, I thought it was pretty good. I did enjoy it a lot, and I still got some entertainment, and there were certainly some moments that really took my breath away. And as far as entertainment value goes, I think this one is really great, especially for those who are only watching the anime version of My Hero Academia. It is still so weird, the fact that we have not seen the main characters uh, for a couple of weeks now, but honestly, I've liked all of this. I thought it's been very refreshing. But I still feel like the animators have not given it their all. I still feel like there are some moments here which could have taken their time to be a little more developed and just to frankly focus a little bit more on the actual battle itself and less on going back and forth between the backstory and the actual fight. But for what it is, I still think it's some pretty solid material, which is why I'm going to give this episode a 4 out of 5. I would love to get your thoughts about the episode, so let's talk about it in the comments section below, what you thought about the big final battle between Tomura Shigaraki, Reed Destro, the formation of the Paranormal Liberation Front, and what you're hoping to see from the rest of this season, and the future of My Hero Academia. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Take care of yourselves, I'll see you all next time, and as always, stay down there, baby!